Hello, welcome to any TVN channel. Do you have members working remotely in your organization? They connect to your company through the internet. So how to create a file server that can connect over the internet? I will show you how in this video. This video is divided into two different parts. Part 1 introduces how to build a file server in an intranet. Part 2 configures allowing users to access the file server from outside the internet. Let's start part 1. First of all I check the static app address configuration on the server. My server is installed with Windows Server Operating System. The IP address of the server is 10.11.32.100. I will turn the server into a domain controller by installing Active Directory Domain Services. After the installation is complete, you configure the domain. You set the root domain name depending on your organization or what you want. It will take about 10 minutes to complete this step. The server will restart when the configuration is done. and the server will become the domain controller. You check the results here, your owners have successfully joined the domain. Then you set the DNS IP address to the server IP address. In this example I create two new users, James and Robert. Both of them belong to the same group which is IT. But James uses a computer on the internet, and Robert works remotely. Part 1 of the video I'm going to set up so James can access the file server. After creating new accounts for James and Robert, I added them to the IT group. By default, the clients in the local network when joining the domain can't access the internet, so I set the DNS address as above. This is the address of Google's DNS server, you can use another DNS server if you want. To make sure the server is connected to the internet I use the ping google.com command to check. So the server is connected to the internet. This server is not only a domain controller but also a file server so I will create the shared folder as above. In the folder called data I created a new subfolder called IT for James and Robert's group. 
For organizations with multiple groups you create multiple folders and set permissions for each group. This I have introduced in previous videos. Let's check the results in part 1 with the client computer on the local network. This Windows 10 computer has IP address 10.11.32.200 and has DNS address which is server IP address 10.11.32.100. Next I set up this client to join the domain I just created in the previous step. You provide an admin account and reboots the machine to join the domain. Here I use James's account to log in to the computer as mentioned at the beginning of the video. James will access the file server's shared folder. James' access is successful, he will create a new file to check read and write permissions for the folder named IT. I finished part 1 of the video, next I will move on to part 2 of the video. Part 2 will make Robert able to access the file server over the internet. To do that I will turn the server into a VPN server. So I installed remote access for the server. Next I choose to install direct access and VPN. Wait a moment for the installation to complete. Next I will set up the VPN server as above. Tool routing and remote access. Configure and enable routing and remote access. Custom configuration. VPN access. Then you add an IP address range that will give computers remote access over the internet. Or in this case one of these IP addresses will be assigned to Robert. Next I will set it up to allow Robert's account to have remote access to the server.
Dial in. Allow access. But my VPN server is still blocked by the firewall so I set it to allow VPN through. Routing and remote access. Here I use PPTP protocol, a protocol that makes VPN set up quick but not as secure as other protocols. But the VPN setup is still blocked by your router so you forward the port on the router. Port to forward for PPTP protocol is 1723. On the router I forward port 1723 to the server's IP address. My server IP address is 11321100 Robert wants to connect to the server, he needs to know the public app address. My public app address is 11317511561. It's time to check the setup result of this section. From Robert's computer from outside the internet, he will connect to the internet. On a Windows 11 client, create a VPN connection. Public app address. PPTP protocol. Username and password of Robert. Connect. VPN connection established. To see if the IP address is correct as I have set it up. Ten eleven three two one five one. This is an IP address among the IP addresses I have set up. Of course, Robert will access the shared folder. He successfully accessed the IT folder from outside the internet. But there is a problem I need to solve that is my public app address is dynamic app address.
It will change over time and this is difficult for Robert. So I use DuckDNS service to update public app address. This way Robert uses the domain name to establish the VPN connection to the server. Here I make a free domain name to update public app address. On the server I install the DuckDNS client. This application requires a server with Java installed. You perform the above steps to update the public app address. You set up the domain and token for the DuckDNS client. As you can see the public app address has been updated. Robert instead of using a public app address, he uses a domain name to create a VPN connection. Thanks to that, I solved the dynamic public app address problem. I finished the two parts of the video and introduced the basics of how to build a file server for a small organization that has people working remotely. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.